theory is emotional. <laughs> um, before you kill me because of my title, uh, I love theory. Uh, unfortunately, my community does not. Um, uh, it is uh, for my community uh, a non theme uh, theory, and uh, the, it's very scarce the, the amount of work. Uh, of these, uh, of the theoretical side of archaeology. Um, I apologize for my English. Um, uh, this uh, title uh, stood upon me uh, because when I tried <coughs> to convince someone to use theory on their work, I, I would ask, uh, how about some theory? And they, they would say, oh, theory, no, no, no thanks, <laughs> no. Um, so, I, I have a personal interest in archaeological theory and uh, in history of archaeology. Um, I will talk, talk about, about my experience while an undergraduate student and uh, the production of uh, my bachelor uh, thesis that was uh, about uh, processualism in my community and uh, its impact in it. Um, I'm doing this in order to analyze the Portuguese archaeological community, but I, I want to, to make this uh, in order to be able to replicate to another communities. Um, and I ask to myself many times, um, is there a true hatred towards theory or there is something else? Um, when I started the, to follow the path of, of archaeological theory and when I confront others with my interest, I've received a lot <coughs> of criticism. Um, the usual and distinctive uh, meh, the, <laughs> the adept of the excavation, because excavation is much better than theory, and the, the one that liked... Uh, more the material side of uh, archaeology and the last one, the heartbreaking, is that even useful? <laughs> um, but <laughs> uh, anyway, I try to, to, to stand uh, uh, positive about uh, this and uh, my commitment to the, um, my bachelor thesis um, was received like, like this. Uh, another one will fall into the pits of hell. <laughs> uh, and good luck. I started to, became, uh, to become uh, really depressed and sad. My, my self-esteem uh, dropped. Uh, I felt my work uh, wasn't uh, well received. And uh, I asked myself, should I continue to pursue this? And uh, my supervisor was uh, very kind and helped me uh, throughout this journey. And uh, some friends supported me and uh, said it, uh, he ha it had value. The criticism is part of all of this. Uh, it's not uh, only for theory, it's for all of us. Uh, all the uh, chronological periods, etc. Um, <laughs> Uh, that was me against the, the <laughs> atheoric <laughs> monster. Um, although there appeared to be an indifference, and I think indifference, it's much, much, much worse than hate. Because hate, uh, I believe it has a critical component. And indifference, it's just the void. We don't talk about theory. Um, my essay and my bachelor de degree uh, and, and the thesis was completed. Uh, it was presented and discussed with teachers, colleagues in the Congress, and it was well received. I couldn't understand this. Uh, uh, why then all the criticism? It didn't make any sense. <coughs> the great question remained, why? Why did this happen? And uh, I thought to myself, I could, uh, I could have left theory at all. Uh, at all. Uh, I was really depressed. Um, 
what if others that uh, didn't have the support that I had uh, left it? I couldn't uh, sleep well with this problem. Um, so, is there really anything against theory? Uh, uh, as I said, the scientific production in my country about this matter is scarce. Um, we are conservative, uh, conservative community. Uh, we are very afraid to fail. Uh, I don't know about your communities, but mine, I can assure you, we are very afraid to fail. Um, but is that sufficient to justify the silence? Is it a student's problem? Most students th that I know don't like theory, uh, but there are teachers that don't like uh, theory either. Um, is this a student's problem, a teacher's problem, or something more? So I started to, to deconstruct this. Uh, I view this in uh, an holistic perspective and I, I analyzed any comp uh, the, all the components of uh, the curricular unit of theory. Um, I looked at the teachers. They are good, less good teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, quality is relative, like in all the other curricular units, but when we talk about theory, we think oh, the, the, the teachers are horrible, the, they are so, so terrible, my grades will drop. And, but we don't, we don't say <coughs> that to other, at least in my country, we don't say that uh, with the, that f force uh, about uh, other curricular units. I don't know why. Um, the students, not everyone hates theory, I'm here. Um, the preference of the subject matters is also relative. I like uh, theory more than prehistory, or uh, someone could like the Roman period uh, better than other. Um, but uh, when, we th uh, when we talk about theory, it's about extremes. We don't have a mid-term in my country again and but where's the problem this is all relative uh, there is not a striking pro problem emerging from this maybe it's the message but the message isn't bad at all it's holistic uh, it's go through the principal schools of archaeological thought uh, it stimulates the debate uh, we have debates um, we have presentation of ideas it intends to have a critical component. Uh, so, okay, we are perfect. We don't have any problems. Um, that's not it. Uh, where is the problem then? I think, and I, I, I am working on, on this, so this is an introduction to, the, to my view of the problem, that the content of the message is subliminally influenced by a tradition and stigmas. Um, the problem isn't, uh, the problem is here with us, but it was not uh, created in the present, it was created in the past. Um, and uh, to analyze that, I used history of archaeology as a tool and as a means of understanding the evolution of archaeological theory in Portugal and its problems. And I think there may be a cumulative logic of problems. They accumulate <coughs> today. So, I will present some views on theory since the beginning to more recent times. I apologize, but this is, this is uh, symptomatic of the history of archaeology of Portugal. I will only present men <laughs> because <laughs> Because we don't have, or or we are only start, we are we are only starting to have now an engendered perspective of the history of archaeology. So I apologize because I think that's that's n not good at all. I don't have any views of uh, past um, women in archaeology that liked or hated theory. Um, uh, I will start with uh, Stasio de Vega, that was the first professional archaeologist in Portugal, and uh, late Vasconcelos, that was the founder of uh, the founder the um, 
that created the National uh, uh, Museum of Archaeology. Uh, that's a lot of text, but uh, um, briefly what uh, Stasio da Veiga uh, uh, means and uh, thinks about theory is that uh, it is useful and uh, uh, he, uh, he uses it in, in his work um, and he says that uh, uh, we must uh, test hypotheses and uh, and uh, to differentiate the 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 archaeology that we do from the other archaeologies, the the European archaeologies, and I thought, okay, this is the first ar uh, professional archaeology ar archaeologist. We are good. We we start well, but then, late Vasconcelos had a different approach. He. Um, he said, and it's very, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this phrase is uh, very well known in my, my community, that the theory <laughs> is the devil. Um, but but uh, when, we, when we study theory in Portugal, we tend to <coughs> show only the theory is, is the devil phrase. We don't have the contest behind it. And why does Leite Vasconcelos say that uh, theory is the devil? Because we don't have uh, people that are um, good enough to make, to make it. Um, the theory was weak and we, don't, it, we didn't have the structure to, to make it. And uh, he, he, he thought that all... Uh, all things in archaeology were premature. Um, the data must be. Um, we must. Uh, we must have the data, but we we can't make interpre interpretations of it because it's premature. And um, in Portugal, we need to cope ourselves with our armor of patience. This is still. Uh, today's uh, thought, I think, and we, be, we need to be confident about the future. Because in scientific matters, we need to resign, and at any moment, cross arms and wait. Who has the hurry to finish doesn't always finish well. So, I, I think there are two problems here, and I need to, to be faster because my time is not, uh, I don't have m much more. Um, theory as premature and theory as uh, something complex. And then we go to the first half of the 20th century and we have nothing. We have no uh, or very scarce archaeological pr production. We don't have uh, nothing that tells us about the theoretical frameworks of uh, the researchers. Um, w we entered uh, a dictatorship uh, that will only only finish in uh, the 25 de Abril of uh, of uh, 1974. Um, however, it's still visible that some works try to introduce new method methodologies and some theoretical aspects, because there are many. Uh, researchers that ca uh, that come that uh, come fr uh, to Portugal because of the war, at the Second War, we were a, a neutral uh, country, and we have we had a lot of uh, uh, Dutch um, researchers, and uh, we have uh, once again two problems: theory as a non-theme that for me is the worst problem of them all, and theory as eclectic, but purely ecl eclectic. <coughs> In the second half of the 20th century, we have another uh, popul popular phrase that what Portuguese archaeology less needs are theories. And why is that? Because we need everything else. We need education. We need to be part of groups. We need... Uh, 
archaeology to be a social experience. We need more study, more education, more support, more attention, um, more and more, and less wise men, more archaeology. Who, uh, who was making theory in Abel's Vienna um, view was, uh, were the wise men in their ivory towers. Um, the problem here is that theory doesn't solve problems because the, the country and archaeology have problems. It is unuseful. Um, I think there is a cumulative, cumulative logic behind this. The problems don't fade away. They remain in the present and remain rather untouched. Um, but they, they all have a precise temporal period, as I explained, and the context that need to be well delimited and explained. Um, uh, we need, uh, we, the, the community of Portugal, need uh, a renewal of our perspectives and uh, theory has become imperative to do that. Um, but why, why didn't we use it uh, now? Because of the habit and the tradition and the elusive solidity of the problems that I presented. They, they remain as they are uh, rock solid. They, they aren't uh, uh, fragile. Um, so I, I, I try to de de deconstruct again these problems. I don't think archaeological theory is difficult. I think archaeology is difficult. Why then associate complex, complexity solely to theory? If I go to my community and ask, oh, um, do you like ex excavations? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, and do you, uh, is it uh, easy or difficult? No, excavation, it's very easy. Uh, we know that is not true, Ex excavating a site is a very complicated task. Um, I think probably there is, a, there is still a romantic ideal of archaeology uh, behind this argument. And if in the time of Vasconcelos and Vienna, due to the low rate of the illiteracy and efficient teaching of archaeology, this perspective was valid, because it was, However, today, with the globalization phenomenon, the open source and new course curricula, I don't think it's, it's justifiable. Um, uh, the usefulness. Um, I, thi I think theory is considered unuseful because it isn't something practical. There, there is this dichotomy of uh, theory and practice. I, uh, and I think this perspective <coughs> is limitative. We should, use, uh, we should use them and see them as complements. Uh, the scientific inquiry, the more complete and equipped, the better. The subjects and practice will benefit a lot. Criteria, parameters, choices, they delim delimit what is reliable of producing scientific knowledge. Uh, without theory, we would be condemned to a pure description of archaeological materials. This is my view. Um, it's premature. Uh, it has a negative connotation. All the interpretations are conceptually weak and forcefully incomplete. I, I don't think so. I think, uh, uh, and uh, although theory suffers or benefits from its creator, uh, uh, it's not a bad thing to be uh, infallible. Uh, Failure is not a bad thing. Um, therefore, the theoretical production mustn't be. There's an error there. I think, mustn't be viewed as an attack to the scientific humility or an exercise of pretension, pretentiousness. Um, on, the contrary, on the contrary, it must be a, an attempt for us to approach to a solution or truth throughout opportunities. It should establish bridge between researchers and origin debates. I'm almost finishing. Um, uh, uh, about the eclecticism, the off term is truly necessary. We mustn't import ideas and use them uncritically, but we can close the door to innovation as well. We need scientific fair play, respect and appreciation, 
and uh, I borrowed this from a <laughs> session, <laughs> failure is not fatal. Concluding, all those problems explored here are determinant to understand what is the state of the art of archaeolo archaeological theory in the Portuguese community. Its constant repetition in different periods and its cumulative nature didn't help the creation of a positive uh, view of the theoretical components of the discipline. However, and this, again, this is my view, the strength of those problems is merely il illusory. Today are confront we are confronted with solutions breaking the anti-theoretical stigmas still present in the archaeological community. To the question, should we abandon the teaching of theory, we must respond, and I think that uh, we must respond with a vigorous no. And so, and then we <laughs> may pass from the theory, no thanks, for the theory, yes please. Thank you very much.